Hello everyone, my name is the Fox. In this video, we're going to be talking about the latest Steam Deck update, SteamOS 3.2. Now, SteamOS 3.1 just came out a few days ago, so Valve is really banging on all cylinders here, just pumping out update after update. These are very large updates that are coming out. We're going to talk about them a little bit. Now, I was covering 3.1 update, specifically the part that I was most interested in, which was the half rate shading VRS 2x2 mode, and kind of looking at it from a few different games. It's a global setting, so there are some not wise things that are going on there. Ultimately, I don't recommend enabling it. We'll go over that more in just a moment. The biggest feature here is obviously the thing that I was alluding to for a long time, and there's kind of a, a story that we're going to talk about before I get too far into this video that I need to address here. So we can now change the frequency of the display on the Steam Deck itself. I personally really recommend using 40 hertz almost exclusively, even though you have a range between 40 and 60 at one hertz in increments. So you can do 41, 42, 43, which is cool. Uh, but I only really recommend doing 40. And I'll explain why later on in this video. The thing that I need to talk about here is that uh, so I the timing of all of this it really needs to be addressed that my video that I did on Windows had zero impact on Valve releasing this frequency display thing at all. It was just really weird timing. So I had talked to Valve about this a while ago, and it was something that I had just kind of just talked to them about. So I was like, hey, do you guys ever consider 40 hertz mode? Because this is something that we've been doing uh, in the handheld scene for a while. Because we don't have a lot of power on these devices and previous devices as well. We'd either be able to hit 60 or we're just kind of frame capping the 30 almost exclusively all the time for mo modern AAA games. So it was something that I addressed with uh, Valve and they said, well, yeah, it's actually already pre-baked in there. And I was amped. I was like sick. If it, if we can have an ability to let people change the frequency on the device instantly and easily, that's a huge feature. So I had really kind of hyped it up a lot and for good reason it's a an amazing feature we're going to go over some of the things of that on, using on steam os as well uh we're also going to take a look at the timing of it between how it works on windows versus how it looks on steam os so some good stuff there basically bottom line is that uh i had to kind of tiptoe around knowing about this frequency thing happening on steam deck um and not talking about it so the problem was is that i knew that this frequency change was coming to steam deck at some point i was waiting for that time to talk about it however during that time of waiting to talk about it cypher over on the gpd discord just kind of bulldozed through and made it available on windows and even then i waited like a week for like hoping something would happen and nothing was happening i didn't hear anything so i was like all right, well, I'm not even, I'm not doing my due diligence on this side. I really need to talk about it because it's already public. It's been on the Discord. People have been talking about it. Uh, it wasn't large because, you know, not many people were really doing Windows on there. But it's like, okay, well, it's publicly, it's already available on the public. I have to report on this. So I did. And literally the, the day that I was making the video happen, Valve was like, hey, it's coming out soon. I was like, oh, God. So, um, again, the timing of it worked out that it was just coincidental. Me making my video did nothing to have Valve push this out any faster. It was going to come out when it was going to come out, which is yesterday. So uh, really cool feature. I'm glad it's out. Uh, I'm glad that Valve had the knowledge to already do this without even like everyone that talked about it was like, oh, yeah, yeah we we're already doing that. So Valve understands the importance of these types of things these gaming features so um i'm really happy that it's there i think everyone should do it we're going to talk about that in a moment while i go over these patch notes from cmos 3.1 and 3.2 there will be a few that i'm skipping there's i'm only going to touch base on the ones that i find important let's get right into it so up first we have the added lock screen so the lock screen here and some people might not be aware of this on the Steam Deck, when you log in, after you've already authenticated, it will just log you straight in forever, always, without having to put any username or password on ever again. So it can be a security concern if you were to carry your Steam Deck all around and you lost it, then whoever picks it up will just be able to waltz right in. If you were to carry your Steam Deck out and about, it would be wise to enable the security feature. Additionally, if you had additional accounts on the Steam Deck and authenticated them in, they could log into any account at that point and just kind of just waltz into any one of them. It's very user friendly for a person to just kind of hand out a Steam Deck for the family and have them log into whatever account they are, because then it's you're not kind of clobbering around with the virtual keyboard and it, it just gets kind of messy. So it's very fuser friendly in that you can just waltz in after already authenticating. However, it is a security concern, so they added this. So pretty good feature update. Uh, this one is also pretty big. Added support for multiple windows within one application of the game. 
So now this is something that I talked about for a while. Gamescope, I find to be a huge feature of Steam Deck. It is the compositor for Steam Deck. Everything that goes through, it is the window of the Steam Deck. The problem was that Gamescope attempted to automatically determine what is the primary dominant window. If there are multiple screens that a game uh, opens up, like say other launchers or emulators that have other windows that stay open and you have like a debug window, like I've showed you in my RPCS3 emulation vid, you know, closing down that window because it will help Gamescope automatically know what is the pr uh, primary dominant window. Those are the types of things that you got to be, be aware of. And it got fr frustrating in some games. End user wise, having it automatically determined would be the best, but it's not something that could be easily encapsulated. So adding this manual method of choosing which window you want, ultimately I think is the best choice because it gets frustrating to try to figure out how to stop this automatic flickering from happening versus just you know pressing a button and just choosing a window. So this is a great update. Uh, this is one that most people probably don't care about. More performance improvements for players with very large game libraries. I think I have a pretty large game library on Steam. I might qualify, but this is something that I'm glad that they did. And then kind of buried under the fold here under OS updates, you have this one that is pretty huge. Edit half rate shading experimental option, the quick access menu, forcing two by two variable rate shading into existing games for power savings. This is kind of big, huge. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Ultimately, I don't leave, I don't recommend having on at the current moment. I think I'm pretty confident that there's going to be a better implementation later on. The current implementation, even though it seems like it's doing some, has some intelligence of whether or not to apply it or not, uh, it can be bamboozled and it can be applied on, on stuff, even though it shouldn't be applied on stuff. And that has to do with rendering pipeline of the game. I'll talk about this more in a moment. Let's go on to the other changelog stuff. And then this was the big one that just came out just yesterday. This is SteamOS 3.2. Now this one is pretty big. Edit an OS controlled fan curve to improve the experience in low usage scenarios now this is something that a few people misunderstood uh, and they thought that they'd be able to manually tune this themselves in some of the options this is a valve engineered thing that's happening in the background that's already set uh, and this kind of ties in tandem with the biggest part of the update added experimental support for changing the in-game screen refresh rate the refresh rate will automatically adjust the desired option when going in and out of games now you will go through the performance tab the little cram quick access menu the ellipsis button you'll press that to enable it i totally recommend getting on this beta train it is a huge feature and you need to experience it for yourself because it's fantastic there are lots of implications here on how big this is and why i recommend 40 hertz this is pretty much the end of the change log stuff that i want to talk about so we'll talk about everything and i'll talk about the hertz changes and comparing it to windows as well as why i recommend 40 hertz exclusively let's get into the vrs update vrs is variable rate shading most people don't talk about like there is if you look up what i'm about to say you won't find it anywhere vrs and checkerboard rendering two different types of thing however they fall under the same umbrella of passive foveated rendering now Passive foveated rendering as a term really doesn't exist. It's something that I use. Foveated rendering does exist. And foveated rendering is uh, what I consider active foveated rendering is you have a camera that is looking at your eyes and looking at where you're looking on the screen. And based on where you're looking is where full resolution is rendered and everything else is sub resolutions. Now, the reason we want to do that is our eyes only have full resolution right where we're looking. Everything else on our peripheral vision is only actually good for motion, not for resolution. So it is taking advantage. Foveated rendering techniques are taking advantage of a weakness of our own human sight. Checkerboard rendering does this by having a checkerboard layout and doing full resolution, sub resolution, full resolution, sub resolution in a checkerboard manner. And what this means is that you're not doing full resolution across the entire screen. You're doing uh, full and partial across the screen. But depending on wherever area you're looking at, you could be looking at the full resolution square at any given moment and sometimes looking at a sub resolution square at any given moment. So this is a passive foveated rendering. There's no camera looking at you and adjusting rendering. It just does it automatically all the time and end result is that performance is better you still get great image quality for the most part where you're looking vrs is another kind of application that tries to take advantage of our eyesight if we jump over to like the microsoft site here right you can see this variable rate shading shade more where needed and take a look at this block right here and then take a look at here one by one this means that it's full shading the entire screen every pixel gets full compute 
right? And then you have two by two. Two by two uh, is basically the implementation that is live now on the Steam Deck by doing half rate shading. We'll talk about that more in a moment. If we go here, you can go as high as four by four. And then there's other variations. If you want to do vertical horizontal slices, two by one, one by two, four by two, or two by four. And if we take a look here, you can see right in the center and right above, right over here, right? That center portion is all one by one. VRS is effectively off. There is no variability. It is just one by one. So you're looking where you're looking constantly dead center of the screen is full resolution. But if we go and take a look, you can see that there are two by two just, just along the edges of it. So this is where our peripheral vision starts losing definition. And then you start looking at two by one, one by two, and then you also have four by four all the way at like the bottom, bottom left and right, the most extreme edges where you're not really going to be looking a lot. There's nothing that's really that's going to be uh, dynamically coming in that really matters all that much. It's really just for motion, not so much for definition. So you can clearly see that if we look at this particular graph, a even just doing a dumb region-based VRS implementation is a far better implementation than what is currently being done on the Steam Deck. Now, if I quickly show you what Sekiro is doing, if we enable it and unenable it, you can clearly see that the text on Sekiro is not being really altered all that much. However, if we take a look at the, the protagonist's back, you can see that there is an image quality degradation. So enabling and disabling it, you can clearly see that half rate shading is being applied and it does look like there's some intelligence on where to apply it and ignoring or trying to bypass anything that has text or HUD based elements. However, there is a weakness that is involved in this. If the game's engine has like a deferred rendering engine, it will apply it to the entire screen because what it's looking at doesn't see any text-based HUD elements because that pass comes later and then the VRS is going to get crushed on top. In this particular example, you have Forza Horizon 5 with it off and on. You can see it clearly crushing the text on uh, Forza Horizon 5. In this particular instance, you would not want half-rate shading. You would rather have something like uh, FSR Fidelity Super Resolution, which is already in-game and will bypass the HUD because that's happening by the game's engine. Like Devs already did this, so they don't do anything. You're not applying any sub resolutions. You're not doing any render. Re you're not doing any render resolution scaling on the HUD based elements because you want that to be nice and crisp. You're only doing that on the stuff that's getting rendered for the uh, screen, everything underneath the HUD elements. So again, the half rate shading thing that is in there does have some intelligence. We can clearly see that there is some intelligence that it has. Having instead of just doing two by two only wherever and determining where or not that gets put on the screen. It would really be better if there was a region-based VRS, much like how you can see in this particular image where you can kind of define, or it was already predefined where you can do even coarser uh, variable rate shading. Okay, here's the deal. VRS is a component that helps the GPU, and the GPU is the most efficient part of the Steam Deck. No matter what frequency it's at, it actually does a fantastic job, and I really recommend leaving the GPU set to auto because it does a super fantastic job auto determining how much power it needs for any given scene randomly dynamically at all times every time i've tried a many different instances of it i've tried looking at it it is sensational our biggest problem is the zen 2 cpus which vrs really doesn't help uh, the zen 2 cpus we really want to keep them between 2 and 2.5 gigahertz in this particular power uh, frequency range power is worthwhile to spend on that frequency it is extremely performant and efficient at this clock as soon as we start going over 2.5 gigahertz power starts being rapidly spent for example all four core at 3.5 gigahertz is roughly 14 watts we don't have any power for uncore and we have no power for gpu at that point so we will net you'll never hit 3.5 gigahertz on all four cpus while having any power for uh, gpu or uncore Typically, what you're going to have in gameplay situations is about 3.1 gigahertz, 3.2 gigahertz max. At that point, the GPU is sipping power and uncore sipping power. All power is diverted to the CPU. It is supremely wasteful. So VRS as a technique to kind of lighten the burden on GPU is only worthwhile if we're at the same time limiting what the CPU is doing, which means we have to push frame rate down. So you can either do 30 FPS or we can do 40, 40, 40 hertz and 40 FPS. 40 hertz and 40 fps this is the 
biggest part of the update and you should get on this beta train if you were concerned that it's going to mess up your machine wait for stable but i've been on it worst case scenario you just have to do a you just recover you flash a usb stick either get a flash stick that has usb a so you can plug it into a computer uh flash the recovery slip it over to usb c and plug it in to recover or you use a usb c dock and you know connect it that way those are two ways that you can do it Worst case scenario, you just have to recover. That's literally the worst case scenario. You won't have any other situation. If you don't want to buy any of that stuff, then I guess wait for stable. It is a fantastic feature. You have to try it out. Let's talk about how much better it is over Windows. So just in the frequency switching, uh, on Windows side, when we switch frequency, it basically takes four-fifths of a second to fully switch over, so under a second, which is fine. And Valve has been spending a lot of time here really honing this in to make it super fast, which is hilarious to me because I didn't think that this was possible or worthwhile to even like investigate to make this even smaller. So Valve did that work and it's like basically two fifths of a second when we're counting, when I count 60 frames a second on the camera capture that I got. So it's roughly two to three times faster uh, than Windows. The other benefit is that you can do every particular increment between 40 and 60. So you can do 41, 42, 43, 44, all the way up there. And the reason that I recommend doing 40 hertz is because at 40 hertz, we're only spending around 15 to 20 percent more power to have significantly better playability. Now, it may not seem that going from 30 FPS to 40 FPS is a giant difference, but you really need to experience it. I, I've been trying to hype this up and talk about it for the longest time because it is amazing. You need to do it. Again, the reason why I say 40 hertz exclusively is because of power reasons. As soon as we start going to 45 hertz or 50 hertz, we are going to start engaging the weakest link of the Steam Deck, which is its Zen 2 CPU cores. At that point, there are going to be some games that you're just not going to be able to hit 50 no matter what you do. Or even if you do, it's going to be kind of fluctuating. It is far better to hit 40 more frequently than kind of skirting around 45 or barely hitting 50 when we're at that point wasting the maximum amount of power that we can and having a subpar experience on top of that. Now that's not to say that every game is like that. You should experience that however you want. And if you want to push 45 or 50 hertz, I know uh, someone on a Discord channel I was talking to said that they could uh, detect PWM pulse width modulation uh, screen flicker. They could see screen flicker with their eyes. Some people ha are very sensitive to PWM and it gives them a headache. So having something that is uh, faster, uh, if it flickers faster, it's less noticeable to them. It gives them less of a headache. So going up in frequency might be necessary for you if pulse width PWM matters to you. It doesn't matter to me. For me, 40 hertz is a catch-all advice that I could just kind of blast out there that you should be doing 40 hertz. The difference between 30 FPS and 40 FPS is basically 15 to 20% uh, more power usage, but it's still within that zone of being efficient on those Zen 2 cores. And you're still going to be getting close to three hours of battery life instead of under two hours or skirting around two hours. And then the other big reason for those people that find the fan too loud, 40 hertz is again, the best compromise between very good playability, very low power, very low heat output, which means that the fan curve is going to be lower, which means you're going to hear it less. Overall, it is the best compromise from my, in my opinion, right? I'm not saying that you shouldn't try other things. I'm just saying bottom line here is try your best to always do 40 hertz, 40 FPS. It's fantastic all around. I just love it to death on the Steam Deck. It is pretty much perfect 800p40 is where it's at on the steam deck definitely give it a try that's pretty much my take on the steam deck updates i'm positive there are still going to be a bunch of updates coming to steam os3 and i'm still looking forward to being able to play these on the other handles but right now as they keep on adding more and more new features to them and kind of wait until like this kind of all-inclusive uh, steam os3 comes to these handle devices because it's going to be pretty sweet when it does arrive that's pretty much it for me as always guys thank you for your time and thanks for watching.